guys, Todd from Great Escape Farms here. Today I'm going to make a compost bin for inside during the winter time using red wiggler worms and the items shown here in front of you. So the process is I'm going to have this bin without any holes in it and that's going to capture any uh, juices or overflow stuff. I'm going to use this bin right here and I'm going to drill some holes in it, some air holes for the worms. In the bottom of this one, I'm gonna put these wood blocks just to lift this one up. And what I will do ultimately is have this one set in top. The blocks will hold it up off of the bottom. And then any liquid will, any excess liquid will fall into the bottom. That way I don't drown the worms. And I can actually use that as worm juice and put it out in the garden later next year. So the size tub that I'm using is a 10 gallon tub. This is a small one. I eventually want to go with a larger one. I'm thinking I'm probably going to order a thousand worms and I'll start them out in here, see how, how many that is and how long they go for. And I'll probably end up doing a bigger tub system and probably have a couple of them running in parallel. And then I'll add stuff to one and let the other one sit and bake for a while and kind of uh, rotate through. So what I'm going to do now is I have a drill here with a 1 8 inch bit. I'm going to drill in the lid for air holes. I'm going to drill around the upper section and I'm going to put just a couple down at the bottom to drain out. And then after I do that, I will put the system together and show you where I'm at. Let's see, so I have six holes on the bottom here, one in each corner and then one in the center. On the sides, I have 16. I did four on all four sides. And you'll notice they're on the upper portion here. So I'll have all the uh, compost material on the bottom portion here, holes on the upper. The lid part here, I have 12. I did three on each side. This system, or this bin will sit on top of these, and it will sit like that, and that allows, just holds it off the ground so the stuff can drip through, the bottom one catches it, there are no holes in that. What I'll do is I will add the compost material in here, and I'll just save this lid, I only, I had two lids, I only drilled holes in one because I only need one. I'll save the other one just for extra in case something happens to this other one here. So I'm gonna go ahead and start making some compost material and show you what to do with that. What you wanna put on the bottom is some brown material. So it could be leaves or anything like that. For my purposes, I'm recycling paper. I had shredded up some financial documents and you can also use paper towels and things like that. Uh, one one things that the worms absolutely love is shredded up cardboard. So you can grab cardboard, just make sure you don't get any plastics or anything like that in there. And you want a fairly decent layer of this stuff in here. Go a little bit deeper here. And then you put in your greens as it's called, which uh, is going to be banana peels. It can be things like eggs. It can help put a little calcium into your soil and all. And I need to talk to my daughter about this because there's a yolk in this one. We don't want the yolks, we don't want the protein, you just want the calcium and stuff. Also in here, I don't know if you can see it, there's coffee grinds. So put all that stuff in. And my wife found this little container here. It allows us to collect this in the house without making too big a mess. I'm just gonna dump all this stuff in. Although this is biodegradable, I just don't want it in here. Now there's a couple apples in here. They have a lot of bad spots on them and all, but I don't want them in here whole. So I'm gonna cut these up a little bit later. I'll toss those aside. Bless you, Molly. I'm sorry you're sneezing. Uh, so coffee grounds, I have tea bags in there. We had tacos last night and put, had some lettuce. And although this isn't bad, we don't really have any other use for it. So it will end up going bad in there. Crush that up and that's about it. I'll save the rest for later. And then we're gonna put some more paper on top. And I'm gonna come through and a little bit more here. 
come through and put some more veggie, another row of veggies. And this is all I have prepared right here. I will cut the apples up and add those. And I, I have some watermelon husks and some other things to put on here. And then I'll do one more row of the shredded paper. And then I will put on some uh, inoculant, if you will, which is some other compost and worms and stuff like that. Just a small little bit of it, not even a full layer, just to kind of kickstart the bacterial process going and let that sit for a little while and then I will add the worms to it. Okay, I got the other layer added and I started putting the paper on top, the brown material on top, even though it looks white. Uh, I went out in the garden, I grabbed some comfrey and some yarrow and some autumn olive leaves and a couple other things, just to mix it up a little bit so it wasn't all fruit scraps in here. I can do that because I have those leaves right now. Also, the best way to do this on top is to just put the browns on top and then squirt it with a water bottle. But I don't, I know we have water bottles around, I just can't seem to find any right now. So what I'm doing is I put it in, grabbed a tub full of water, let it soak in here for a minute, kind of drain it out, squeeze it together, drain it out a little bit, and then just try to spread it out here. What you want is the top layer to be moist, not really soaking wet, but just moist enough to kind of kick everything off here so when we do add the worms, they don't dry out on us. Just finish up this batch here, kind of spread it out. And then, like I say, we will inoculate on top with the some dirt that has already got, or some compost that already has bacteria and stuff like that in it. And I should have had this ready. Let me reach over and grab it. And in the PDC class I was at last week, they gave me some red wiggler worms. And although there really aren't any worms in here. There was maybe one or two. That was it. I, there's one that were kind of died off. I don't know if it's from the heat or what, but you can see it's fairly decent looking compost here. There's a little bit of sand in there with a little bit of grit. And I'm just going to take and sprinkle that over the top here and kind of spread that out a little bit. And if there are worms in here that are still alive or any worm larva or eggs, they'll go on down. And I'll just cover this up and I'll still add some scraps from now and again. And the worms will go and dig and eat the scraps as they break down with the different bacteria. So I'm going to go ahead and order the worms now and probably get them in a week or so and then I'll add them on top. In the meantime, what I will do is I will cover this up. I will lay it in the basement in a dark area. You want it to be fairly warm. Red wiggler worms don't like to go below freezing. So it's not something that we're going to put outside. So for me, I will put it in the basement and uh, let it sit out there. So once I get the worms, I'll go ahead and give you an update on what's going on here. But uh, for today, that's it. And I'll be back in a couple days to a week on this video to finish it up. Okay guys, I received the worms today in a priority mail bag. I opened it up here, came with instructions. I got it from a uh, called Uncle Uncle Jim's Worm Farm. Uh, if some place I found on Amazon, they seem to have the most stuff going on. So according to the directions here, it says that they ship them in dry peat moss to kind of help them transport better. And as soon as you get them, take them, open the bag and pour a half a cup of water in it and let it sit for a little while to start rehydration and then pour them into my, uh, my compost medium. So I'm gonna go ahead and open this bag up and pour it in. I'll show you what it looks like right now and then we'll add it into the rest of the uh, compost bin in a little while. Okay, so I just, undid the package here and you can see don't know how well you can see the worms in there but they are in here they're moving around like they said they're a little small and a little scraggly at this point and they need a little bit of water so i got the 
half a cup of water here. This is filtered water, so it's from a water jug. Uh, filtered, uh, it's, although it's cooled, I've mixed a little warm water in it. It's room temperature, maybe just a slightly warmer. It's not hot, not cold. And I'm just gonna kinda pour that over top here. And probably gonna let this go for about a half an hour before I mix these guys in with my compost bin. And just let it sit like that right in the sink here and then I'll go ahead and I'll take it downstairs and I'll introduce them to the compost system. So I'll set up shop down there in a little while and show you uh, as they go in. Okay, it's been uh, pretty close to an hour here now that these have been going so I'm just gonna go ahead and take and dump them out. Lots of little wiggly worms in here and they are free to dig down into the compost or dig down into the wet paper and kitchen waste and to make us some good compost. Uh, got one uh, foot on the side here, see if I can't get him down. And I'm probably going to go ahead and end this post right here. I'll, what I'm going to do is just lay the top on. They say not to spread these guys out too much. Uh, just let, They will dig down and take care of themselves here. I'll do an update post in a couple weeks and show how they're doing. But that will probably be it for right now. So this is how you put a wind, uh, worm compost bin together. And these little guys right here are what they call red wiggler worms. And there's a thousand of them in here. Might be a few too many for this little bin. If they end up chewing this up too quick, then what I'll do is I'll go ahead and get another bin or actually a bigger bin and spread them out. So it says that they will double in quantity in 90 days. So in theory, if I have a good environment here, they could go up to 90 or I'm up to 2,000 worms in three months. So we'll see. Anyhow, that's it for now. Uh, please consider subscribing to our YouTube channel and also check out our blog post at greatescapefarms.com. Thank you very much and have a great day.